Hi, my name is Yancey. Welcome to Kickstarter. We asked you to come here today because we wanted to tell you about the second annual Kickstarter Film Festival that will be happening July 9th, 2011 on a rooftop in Brooklyn, New York, atop of the Old American Can Factory. It's going to be a special night. We really hope you can join us. We're going to be screening videos from Kickstarter projects. We're going to be, all of us are going to be on hand. We're going to show the best and the brightest of what's happened on Kickstarter so far. We did this last year and it was such a success we had to do it again. We're doing it with rooftop films and we couldn't be more excited about it. So I wanted to bring you into the Kickstarter office and let you see how we're getting ready for this year's festival. If you pardon me, we have to keep it down for just a second. Justin's on a call. This is our conference room here. So we've been studiously preparing for this year's festival. We've been watching every single project video. We've been doing... Sorry, we're still working on it right now. But this right here, this is Kickstarter headquarters. Everything happens no, no, here. No, 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 no. From beginning to end, we look at proposals. Yes! Celebrate yeah. success. New Hall of Fame. Looks like they found a winner. So everything that happens at Kickstarter happens here. And this year's festival, we're going to feature 16 films. Documentaries, features, shorts, some project videos, some weird things that we think are really going to blow your mind. If we could just stop right here for just a second. This is my favorite part of the whole office. This is a piece from James Franco's Imaginary Art Project. Is the camera able to pick that up? Do you see? Cool. It's, it's just great. So we've been thinking really hard about how do, we, how do we make this year's festival better than last year's. And you know what we did? We turned to the data and we thought about Let's look at the numbers. Let's analyze how it is that you make the perfect film festival. Let's make a list of all the things that you need to really nail it. And let's make sure we get them exactly right. So we've been working so hard, we've been working tirelessly to make sure that every single piece of this is perfect. Just for you. We really hope that you can make it. We've been testing rewards, making sure they meet our standards for what we're looking for. At the festival itself, it's not just movies. There's going to be project creators. There's going to be fenders there, all people who made projects on Kickstarter. It's too hot. We think it's going to be an amazing night, and we really hope that you can be here. There's going to be about 500 people here, all your future friends, all watching great films, all joining you together. But it's almost 9 o'clock. It's time to begin. So please back this project $10 and come join us for the second annual Kickstarter Film Festival. Thank you. For It kind of describes the style in your office. I was in your office a couple of weeks ago. It's a huge graffiti-laden door, and then it's a, you've got two floors of a Lower East Side tenement building. Explain the culture. Yeah, I wanted to show that video. Uh, so, what's up, everybody? I'm Yancey. Nice to meet you. Uh, yeah, so we're in the Lower East Side in New York. I don't know if you guys know the city very well, but we're on Rivington Street um, above a dive bar and have three floors of an old tenement building from the early 19-teens. Uh, and we have 70 people packed in there very illegally, I believe. Um, and David came by to see it a couple weeks ago. And it's a kind of a core part of who we are, and I think says a lot about who we are, um, that we are just basically a bunch of kids uh, just trying to figure things out. And uh, it, it's, it's a great environment um, with a mix of people who work with project creators and help people think about their ideas and people who build the site and design it and things like that. And for a relatively small group of people, you've had an extraordinary influence. Why do you think um, Kickstarter has become the defining crowdsourcing site, uh, funding site? Well, you know, Kickstarter launched in uh, April of 2009, April 28, 2009. It launched at like 4.28 on a Tuesday afternoon, so it was very unplanned. It was just finally ready, and you could just hit go. Um, you know, we've been working on it for a, a long, long time. Uh, the idea came to my partner, Perry, in 2001. He and I have been working on it together since 2005. I was a rock critic. He was a waiter and an artist. Um, so not people who start successful anythings, really, much less companies or businesses. Um, but it was always driven by this, this recognition that there are more good ideas and there was money to support them, and also that ideas tended to have to conform to the expectations of the people funding them. So if I give you money for something, I'm expecting that I'm going to make some money in return. So immediately from the very beginning, your idea is being asked to contort to this other person's vision um, to try to fit a market or to try to cash out, things like that. Uh, and we reject that wholeheartedly. Um, we think that ideas should have the freedom to be what they want to be, that they shouldn't have to be influenced by money. 
Um, so the whole idea was for Kickstarter to be a place where people, were, people could support things they loved and things could come into existence because other people loved them, and that was it. That was the only, uh, that was the only bar. So it was trying to really lower the bar for what was possible um, and allow anyone to have a shot to do something. So we thought a lot about various system dynamics that might produce something like that. It began with this idea of an all-or-nothing model where there's a, a mass vetting of every idea. Um, and that either people really like an idea and it's able to go forward or they don't, and that there's a, a simple binary outcome. Um, and then just a lot of other things that we thought about to create the right social dynamics that we thought would lead to the best chance of success and the best chance for, for ideas to thrive. Um, so at this point, after four and a half years, it's close to $850 million that has been pledged through Kickstarter. We'll probably pass a billion dollars early next year. Wow. Um, and that's with, you know, just regular people doing their thing and their friends and neighbors and family supporting them. So you've created this platform which democratizes access to a good idea of getting funded, but you've also imposed certain rules, some things you won't allow to be funded and some processes you sometimes intervene in. So explain your thinking and what you're trying to achieve through these rules? Well, I think that, I think that any market is going to need some kind of guiding hand. Uh, I think a, a pure, unfettered market, I think, is, is often problematic and leads to a lot of poor outcomes. Um, we do have some slight controls in a few ways. Uh, there are a few rules that guide what can be on Kickstarter and what cannot. The main thing that we don't allow is, is anything charitable or in the a realm of fund my life. Um, we think those things are hard to sit side by side uh, with art projects. So, for instance, if you're trying to do a project to save Haiti and I'm doing a project to publish my first book of poetry, our project side by side, you make me look like an asshole without even trying. <laughs> you know, there are always people dying in the world. There's still a desire for people to create and, and do things that come from the imagination. Those two things should be able to coexist. Um, and they do in the world, but on, on a platform basis, I think it's important to have a place committed solely to people exploring creative ideas. Um, and then also, we, we try to guide people uh, to as much as they can to share ideas and not to just try to sell things. Um, I think the culture of advertising has been a, a corrupting one. Apologies to all your advertisers. Uh, but um, <laughs> I think advertising is pretty corrupting. You know, it, it encourages you to oversell and, and to try to just promise as much as you can and figure it out later. Um, and we really don't like that. We find that very troubling. And so instead, we want everyone to just treat everyone like a peer. You know, you're just sharing an idea with somebody. Um, so, for instance, in the realm of hardware specifically, which is a, a big part of Kickstarter, uh, about a year ago we enforced a few rules, um, the chief one being that you couldn't show a photorealistic rendering of your object. So, rather than going into Photoshop and creating the most beautiful possible version of what you hope that you could one day make, um, instead show the one with the wire sticking out of it and with the case that's not quite right and just talk about that and talk about what the next steps are going to be. And if you approach things with that kind of openness, other people will help you you get a lot more leeway. But if you present this perfect idea and then sell people on that and try to match it later, you're putting yourself in a bad position. Um, and I spent about a year and a half talking to product designers, some of the best product designers in the world, I mean, the most renowned people in the world. And they were admitting to me that they couldn't tell the difference between an actual physical object and a 3D rendering when it came to looking at an image. And so you have something like that, which to me feels fundamentally false and dishonest, I think that's problematic. So I, I know that's not the way the rest of the world is working. Um, but we are trying to create a universe that is built around these principles that we think are ultimately what are important, which is you know, to, to share, to be honest, uh, to treat everyone like a peer, and, and I don't know, to, to work from that place. So those are the sorts of values that we're going to continue to fight for and that I believe are worth fighting for, um, and that we will do at the expense of the bottom line. You know, These are things that will mean that Kickstarter will likely make less money because people will want to do the shiniest possible thing. Uh, but I think in the long run that this is the right thing for us, and I think there's a greater moral truth that we're pursuing. I think one of your other rules is um, you don't allow people to put medical devices on the site. Walter De Brewer from Scanadu, who spoke here yesterday, had to go to another yeah. crowdfunding website for his Scanadu Scout. Yeah. What's the reasoning behind this? Uh, yeah, so there's, there are interesting things. Like, uh, right, so we prohibit medical devices. Um, what... What we specifically mean by that is early on I was seeing people coming on and trying to launch projects saying we will cure dialysis with this thing. Here's this thing. We promise if you take this, you will never have a heart attack again. And this kind of quackery. And again, this, this 
notion of, uh, of really promising something. If you're making those sorts of promises with, I don't know, some Arduino or Raspberry Pi hack thing, and maybe the MIDI doesn't work the way it was supposed to in the end, that's not a huge loss. But when you get into areas of, of medicine and health, those sorts of promises are regulated by the FDA and other organizations, and for very good reason. Um, and so we thought for us that it made the most sense for those sorts of things, if it is promising some sort of cure, that that felt uh, probably like an area that would be smart to stay away from. Um, for things that are more diagnostic, that's fine. But we do try to, we do think a lot about what is being promised to the backer in the end. Um, and there, are, you know, it's interesting. We, we've built this system over four and a half years. Over five million people have backed a project. About one and a half million people have backed more than one project. Close to a billion dollars. And every project that's launching now, they're launching into a huge network that we have built and every other creator has built. And we're really excited to share that. I think it's amazing. You know, someone like Spike Lee made a movie on Kickstarter earlier this year, and a first-time filmmaker gets to go on Kickstarter and has the benefit of Spike Lee having used that. Like, that's amazing. There's this real sharing of resources. Um, but at the same time, you can look at that as someone launching a project now as using the resources that have been built up through Kickstarter's time. Um, and so using that for reasons of, of promising these magical things that may or may not be possible is something that we're going to be, you know, we're going to defend and we're going to try, try to take some stands on. But this is hard stuff. You know, a, a lot of the things that we're dealing with are basically governing the future. What you're seeing on Kickstarter is the most bleeding edge parts of culture and technology and we're trying to approach them in a thoughtful way and think long term about what the right outcome is for both the Kickstarter platform for the backers and society as well. We try to think at that type of scales as much as we can. So what sort of numbers of projects, let's say per day, are proposed and then what proportion are accepted? Yeah, so there is a process. Uh, it's a very simple process of getting a project on the Kickstarter, which you build out your project page and then just before you launch, you share it with a member of our team and they just look it over to make sure uh, it fits the rules. Um, so we get, I don't know, 350 projects a day submitted to us. Um, each one is gone through by a person one by one, and there's an exchange of back and forth. Uh, we end up accepting close to 80% of what comes our way. Um, if we were to look at the list of like, if we were to look at 100 projects right now on the screens and flip through them together, I think we would come to the same conclusion on probably 99% of them. Um, you know, typically it's just around keeping out, you know, I need to pay my bills, mm -hmm. um, and things along those lines. People can go to other platforms for that, and that's fine. It's not to say that people getting help to pay for their life expenses is, is somehow wrong. Uh, we just have a purpose. You know, the fundamental rule of any internet website is that you stay on topic. Like if you go to any site's guidelines, that's the number one rule, stay on topic. And for us, it's just about creativity. And of the 80%, what proportion roughly get funded? 44% uh, of projects lifetime have been successfully funded, um, which is a phenomenal rate. When we were building and designing the site, we were projecting a 5% success rate. Um, so the site has done really well and we're really bad at projecting things. Um, <laughs> both of those are true. And, uh, and so 44% have been successfully funded, but the bar is really low. Um, if you raise just 20% of your goal, it's a success rate of close to 90%. If you get, I think it's just three or more backers, it's like an over an 80% success rate. So this idea of all or nothing ends up being very true. Ideas really either find a lot of support or no support. And either one is very valuable information. You know, the idea that you might put your thing out there and that no one cares and that no one backs you is a terrifying thought, and understandably so. It's a, it's a rejection, and no one likes that in any part of life. Uh, but you also know now. You have some sense of what the level of interest is about your idea. Um, and so if you were planning on spending the next 10 years on something that ends up that there's not a lot of support for, you, you can know that. You can still decide to do it and you know, make it your quixotic you know, life, life's goal to do that thing. Or you could just think, you know what, maybe the next thing I'll move on to. Um, so in, in either event, we think it's helpful. And when we talk to creators, they're, they're generally very happy they've done it, even the people who uh, it did not work out for them. But this is a platform where strangers are pledging hard cash to other strangers, often for projects that are incomplete. So how do you ensure that level of trust? It, it, is, a, it is a pure honor system. I mean, it, it is an honor system. I mean, there are site terms that guide some legalese about how the site functions. Uh, in only one instance in Kickstarter history has the legal system been used with a backer and a creator, and it was over a $40 reward, and the backer was a lawyer. Um, <laughs> always an important factor, always an important factor. But yeah, it, it's an honor system. You know, it's, it's me standing up there and saying, you know, I'm Yancey, this is everything I've done in my life. This is this thing that's important to me. You know, I would love to do it with you. 
And people are then choosing to back, back me based on whether or not they, they believe me, whether or not they like my idea. And then people go off and do their thing. And, and so for us, you know, it's 50,000 projects that have been successfully funded so far. And they do phenomenally well. The success rate of projects and actually completing is incredible. Uh, it's much higher than you could possibly imagine. And you know, the fact that people are able to, to have this kind of success and that the system is able to be self-regulating is fascinating because one thing it might suggest is that people are really good at spotting bullshit. You know, maybe the people who aren't getting funded, maybe there's a reason why they didn't get funded. Maybe the, the reason why the, the people who do get funded, there, there are good reasons behind that too. Um, so it seems utopian, uh, and it kind of is, um, but it's really borne out to be true over four and a half years. Now, we can't count on that being the case tomorrow, and we have to govern the site and, and think about our work, uh, always thinking about every, every outcome, every possibility. Um, but the track record we've seen so far is phenomenal. I mean, you'll hear people, the negative things people say about Kickstarter is that projects take a long time, that they're late. Um, so is everything in life. Uh, you're also asked, you know, we ask projects to set an estimated delivery date, which is sort of a goal that they work towards. But they set that date before they even started on their projects. So it's a very, very early estimate. And it's totally fair that that would miss uh, in some instances. And the other important parts of that uh, are just that it doesn't really matter how long it takes something to get made. I mean, I, I don't know that anyone ever watches a movie or reads a book and thinks, I wonder how long it took them to wrote that. And it's either more or less impressive depending on how long it is. That's just not how things work. But these projects have this immense level of transparency where people are able to see every part of how the thing works. The entire creative process, soup to nuts, how the idea came to be, each phase of it, every problem they ran into. And it's a degree of transparency that we've quickly taken for granted, as if like we, this is how all things have always worked. This has really been something that's happened in the past four years. And I don't know. So we now know a lot more about what happens. Some people use it to criticize people. Other people use it to learn and try to better understand what it is to be a creative person and what it is to do creative things. And you know, over the long run, we believe strongly that that level of transparency and just sharing of what it is to be an artist and what it is to make something is the benefit of society. You know, for too long, art has been held behind this wall where it's this magical thing that we just we never see. And it, it, it makes artists seem maybe more magical than they should, rather than the sort of hard work and trial and error that it really takes uh, to create something inspiring. So there's a new law that's just come in in the US called the Jobs Act, which is designed to make it easier to solicit funds from the crowd for all sorts of business projects and other projects. Are you celebrating this as a sign that the Kickstarter ethos is going mainstream? Um, yeah, this was the law signed by uh, President Obama last year, last April, I think it was. Uh, yeah, that allows basically crowd investing, so a version of Kickstarter where you can buy some percentage of a company instead. Um, you know, it was wild to hear people in the Senate and Congress talk about Kickstarter a lot. That was really strange. My mom was excited about that. Um, no one ever called us to ask us what we thought. Uh, but yeah, you know, we're not going to do anything with it. Um, we're not going to change Kickstarter. We're not going to contort what we do to turn it into a way for people to make money. Uh, I think that spoils exactly what's special about it. You know, ideas are funded out of love, not out of that kind of financial self-interest. And I think swapping this model for something that just replicates the same system of funding that we have now, but just putting it online, doesn't feel like a great victory to me. I'm sure that there are ways in which it will be successful and that people will do well with it. Uh, but this heart and soul of what we do couldn't be further from that. So we feel very excited about where we are and that we're going to do this for the rest of our lives. So lastly, give us some tips if we want to get our projects funded on Kickstarter. Uh, be a person. Uh, don't be a salesperson. Uh, I think the number one thing is just to be straight and honest and just say who you are and why does you care about this thing and why other people should care too. Um, I think even if you don't plan on using Kickstarter or this type of mechanism, even going through the process of building out a project is really helpful because we ask you a lot of questions and you're basically asked to crystallize your idea into that nut form. And you're asked to share what, how other people benefit from this, which I think is really core to, to an idea spreading. And you just see how it feels. You know, the best thing you can do with the project is you build it out, share it with a friend, get them drunk, and ask them what they really think. And you'll learn a lot from something like that. Um, but it's just a really great way to, 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 I don't know, be introspective and understand what it is you want to do and how it is the world might react to it. So uh, if you have anything you're inspired about or you know, some poetry from college that you might want to share, uh, I encourage you to, to, to do it, to check it out.
Thank you very much, Yancy Strickler.